So this year, Stratfor put together a Stratfor holiday gift guide, which we've done for the last few years. Um, this one is sort of expanded, but in addition to that, our Threat Lens team, which does the corporate security stuff, and our sort of informal geopolitics of sports team also put together their gift guide. So I would highly recommend you check those out as well. And what these gift guides are is sort of to reflect some of what we've been doing, what we've been reading and what we're interested in and what we think will actually add dimension, depth and texture to our readers' understanding of geopolitics and current affairs. So it's a pretty eclectic guide. I think it's really interesting. You should check out the, the entire guide on our site but I'm gonna go through and highlight the three that I nominated. So my first recommendation is actually a film. It's called The Rover, and it's an Australian film set in the near future. The context is kind of vague, and it follows this character wandering through the outback in a beaten up sedan. Um, and what appears to have happened is Australia in the future has become this resource reliant economy sort of sub subservient to other economies in Asia that are more dynamic. It's exporting ore to China. There's a point in the film where he's driving along the road and he's stopped by this train that's hundreds and hundreds of cars long of ore with Chinese characters on the side and mercenaries on top. For me, science fiction is a really interesting counterpart to what we do at Stratfor in terms of forecasting. It looks at current dynamics, it looks at current fears, and it projects them into the future. It's a really great lens to understand how countries see themselves and what they actually fear for the future. And what Australia seems to fear is becoming dependent on outside economies. Right now, Australia is usually referred to as the most China-dependent economy in the world, and that's a scary position for them to be in. The Rover, in terms of its quality, is sort of like a combination between No Country for Old Men and another Australian film called The Proposition. I would highly recommend it. It's dark, bleak, and very, very beautiful. So my next recommendation is a book. It's called The Next Factory of the World, How Chinese Investment is Shaping Africa. And it's by Irene Yuan Sun. Uh, it just came out last month, so I've actually not finished the entire thing yet, but I wanted to put it on the list anyway. Um, it's sort of a follow-up in my mind to some extent to Howard French's book from 2014 called China's Second Continent. And it's about how Chinese migrants, investors, factory owners are changing the way that Africa operates. And her take on it is really interesting because what she does is she talks about how Chinese entrepreneurs transformed Southern China over the last 30 years and how they're using those same techniques to transform parts of Africa that are actually relatively similar to what China was like pre-1978. It's really cool. She understands uh, how factories and manufacturing work in a way that Howard French doesn't necessarily in his earlier book. Um, so I really strongly recommend it. It's a very interesting angle and a look at a dynamic that is invisible to a lot of people. So my last recommendation is a book called A Most Enterprising Country, North Korea in the Global Economy. Obviously, North Korea is very much on the forefront of everybody's mind. It's gonna be one of the key drivers of geopolitics in 2018. And the problem is most people don't really understand precisely how North Korea operates. And really how it survived since uh, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Um, the rest of the, the communist world went through these reform and opening periods. North Korea did not. This book is sort of about how North Korea's economy has been shaped by that period, particularly a famine from 1994 to 1998 called the Arduous March that pulled a lot of people off of uh, state dependency and opened up a sort of private quasi capitalist economy on the sidelines. It goes into North Korea's criminal enterprises. It goes into North Korea's informal enterprises. It's basically an explanation for why North Korea survived and why it's probably going to be able to manage to weather whatever sanctions the UN levels on it in the coming year.